That's how you do it. What we just did for two points, we did it for those two points. Now we do it for those two points, and then we do it for those two points, and just add them. So let's just go through that process. That's because we got one of them already. Or, hey, I'll do this one, you two, you do the other two. So that was 1.9 joules. Just randomly pick one or the other and start working on it and tell me what you get. calculator stuff perfectly well. The top was negative four, right? It is indeed negative four. Mm. So you're going to go with negative three? There's nothing wrong with negative potential energy. Negative 1.35 for the other. 1.35? Negative? Yes. And so the total potential energy stored in this system is just the sum of those. Uh, let's see, 1.1, so negative 2.45 joules. question be phrased if this is what we needed to do? Just find the potential energy in the system? Yes. What's the, what is wording it? something like that. What's the potential energy in the three particle system or in the system? And this is what we're claiming here is that I start out with this. I got my universe and I put a single charge there. It doesn't take any effort at all to put a single charge in some location in the universe. All the effort was created in creating the universe, but we don't need to worry about that. So I put a charge there, and then the question is, how much work does it take in order to move another particle to where it is? Well, when you were doing it from that point of view, how much effort do I need, does it take for me to move a, so I start with a five microcoulomb, how much effort does it take for me to bring a three microcoulomb into its place? Well, remember, they are both the same sign, and so it is repulsive or repelling. It will take effort for me to put that particle there. Positive potential energy. Unlike the negative charge here where it wants to zip there by itself. I don't have to actually do anything, but in my scenario, I don't want the speed to change. I want the kinetic energy to say zero or kinetic energy not to change. And so I'm straining against keeping that from going too fast. Negative energy. And then both negative energies because I'm having to find it being attracted to both of those things from an infinite distance away. Questions to here because we're about to explain why opposites attract and like repels using energy. All right. If I got a five microcoulomb charge here, let's stick with that, capital C. And then I just place a three microcoulomb charge there. I'm going to assume that this is fixed. I'm making this my reference. From a force point of view, which way is this three microcoulomb going to be forced? From an, from an electric field point of view, I have an electric field coming off the five microcoulomb charge. At this point in space, the five, the electric field from here is going in that direction. 
this charge right here is going to be placed into this electric field, will sense the electric field, and then move in the same direction. From an energy point of view, when I put this here, we know it's going to move to the right, at, you know, looking back on it. We know which way it will move, but now let's justify it with energy. If it starts moving to the right, what's happened to its kinetic energy? If I put it here at rest and I let go, it starts to move, what happens to the kinetic energy? Is it large mode or directly proportional? More of a matter of increasing, decreasing. Just increasing. Yeah. Kinetic energy. Oh, let's all do it. What's the formula for kinetic energy? It sounded almost like a single voice. That was incredible. <laughs> if it starts at rest and then starts moving, the kinetic energy has to go up. The electric force is a conservative force, and therefore, if the kinetic energy goes up, and as this moves, it moves to a lower potential energy. So it will move to lower potential energy. From rest. If it's already moving, it wants to move to a lower potential energy and will eventually, well, in a lot of scenarios, it will stop and then turn around. And so, as R goes up, potential energy goes down. So K Q1, Q2. All right, so let's see if this works for negative charges. No questions before we throw in the negative charge. All right, so now we're gonna make it a negative three microcoulomb charge. And that negative three microcoulomb charge we know is going to be moving towards it. But if R becomes smaller, doesn't this fraction become bigger? Yes. Yes. So therefore the potential energy increases. And kinetic energy goes from zero to Is something smaller than zero? I was thinking um, that the electric field would still be the I was I was thinking that like the electric field would still remain the same. Well no, we changed the No, if this, if this stays here, then yes, the electric field is still going to the right. right. Negative charges when they see the electric field go opposite the direction. Right. So yes. From a force point of view, opposites attract. From an electric field point of view, the electric field's pointing this way, charge goes the opposite direction. But we need to be able to explain it with energy as well. And so we've, we're stuck now with this, something we need to resolve. We know it's gonna move closer. And I apologize. Did I cut you off before you actually got to your question? No, you answered it. So. Okay, thank you. We know it's gonna move that way. We have a fraction here. This is my potential energy formula. And the question I said is, as R gets smaller, doesn't this fraction get bigger? And there are a couple of people who agree. If that's the case, then I put this thing here, my potential energy increases, my kinetic energy actually can't decrease. That means energy can't be conserved, which means that all of physics is completely null and void. Or, something we've done is misleading. Or I could personalize it, something I just did was misleading. Does it have to do with the sign of the charges because um, we're dealing with scalars instead of vectors? Keep going. All right, so All Brooke, right. <laughs> Brooke's taking it that far. It has something to do with the signs. Change the you'd have to change the charge in the formula because it's k q one q two. You'd have to change that to negative. So does that something? Does that change what to negative? Um, negative k q one q two. Well, 
you'd have to change the um, sign in the formula to two. Like, let's say that negative three is two, two. You'd have to change that sign. I, positive three to negative three. But does that do anything? So we're all working on this. It's not causing my body to work. It would have been negative three because of positive three. Yeah. I, I, the way you worded it, I would not change the formula, but I would just I would stick in a negative value in for Q2. Yeah, that's what I that, that is actually a key to resolving this. Unless but something happens. Pardon? No, disregard them. Okay. And remember, the world is listening. My one fan in Cambodia. <laughs> Looking at this, wonder. Does our no? I was gonna say, does the electric constant change or something? Yeah. Now you're thinking like a theorist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was reaching really far with that one. You couldn't absolutely value it, could you? I miss it. You couldn't absolutely value it, could you? Or you can change uh, it. That absolute value, the the formula for potential energy does not have absolute value in it. So the question I asked that you answered incorrectly, I said, as R gets smaller, doesn't that fraction get bigger? And people agreed. Why is the fraction not getting bigger? Oh, because it's a decimal. Oh, no, not that. R is a, but like. R is a positive number. Wait, no, it's not going to get smaller, it's going to get bigger. Because if R is like 4 to 1, then the top's going to be, right? Wait, never mind. Can R be negative? No. Okay, what's the distance? Oh, I thought you were about to come back with this later. So can it R still be positive since the distance will still be uh, the same uh, seven centimeters, so R would still be positive in that sense? Yeah, R, R is going to be a positive number. You don't want a negative R there. Well, force. Great. So this is, this is, let's just assume that's my KQ1, Q2 is 12. If I make R get smaller, the overall fraction becomes bigger. Yeah. Unless that's negative. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If we're dealing with a negative number, as the denominator gets smaller, the fraction gets smaller. That's the resolution. If they are attracting each other, that means they are opposite signs, which means my potential energy is negative. So in order to reduce my potential energy, it has to get closer. And as potential energy drops, kinetic energy increases. It would just become a bigger negative number, right? Yes, the, a larger magnitude, but the math people tell me that negative three is bigger than negative six. And if that's true, then it works out. If it's not true, then again, this, everything I've done most of my life is completely <laughs> null void. It's just a matter of time before that is the case. Yeah, well, true. I just didn't want it to happen right now. <laughs> Let me retire, then, then I can be told that it was all worthless. <laughs> all right, so we now have a third explanation for why opposites attract like repels. Or if I did the hand gestures in the right order, opposites attract and like repels. But wait, there's a fourth way. Where are we on time? Lots of time. 
Let's set up the table or the chart. Let's talk about where we are. If we are talking about vectors, and I have two charges, what we have at our disposal is force. The force, the electric force on one from two is equal to K sub E Q1 Q2 over R squared R2 half. The units, the SI unit is the Newton. Being the SI unit being Newton, hopefully that is not a shock. If we're dealing with a single charge, we would talk about the electric field. The electric field only requires one charge. It's a vector quantity. So we've got the electric field. And that's equal to our constant K times Q, capital or lowercase, whichever one happens to be, R squared, R half. The SI unit. Newton's for blue one. If we are looking at all of this from a scalar point of view, we can now talk about potential energy. We have a formula, K, Q1, Q2 capital or lowercase, whatever is appropriate, divided by R. And that's what we just spent half hour on. But we don't have the scale or one charge way of looking at it. So let's do that. When we first talked about electric field, we work with the premise of how does one charge know the other charge exists. We then said, well, if it only depends if this, whatever, we said that the second charge senses something from the first charge, which I call electric pheromones, and again, I'm the only one who does that, that it's giving off something which physicists call the electric field. That electric field only depends upon the charge that was originally there. And that same type of thinking, we have this potential energy that requires two charges, but if something only requires a single charge, well, let's just get rid of a charge. Oh, plus a constant. So we end up with our electrostatic constant. And again, the electrostatic constant is the same as one pump over four pi epsilon sub naught, where 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 in SR units. So we get K E Q over R plus a constant, which again allows us to establish zero wherever we want. Now I'm not going to tell you the name of this quite yet. Let's first take a look at the units. So the units of this new quantity are the units of our electrostatic constant times the units of charge over the units of the distance. Or also, we could just look at it, it's the units of potential energy over the units of charge. So we get rid of the charge by dividing by it. Units of potential energy. Sorry, Coulomb. Big C. Now, for some reason, Newton for Coulomb, they're fine with writing joules for Coulomb. Whoa, that's way too much. So they came up with a name for it. That is the volt. Please note, I am not talking about voltage yet. All I've talked about is just the volt. This quantity right here is known as the electric potential. Now in mechanics, the first semester course, if I made a reference to what's the potential, there's only one that we ever talked about, and that's potential energy. 
Now, if I say what is the potential, I am not talking about energy. If I want to talk about potential energy, I need to use the word energy because the electric potential and electric potential energy are related, but not the same thing. So this is electric potential energy. The symbol that is used for electric potential is the capital V. They just ran out of letters. So, so that's different than the volt though? That, that is, it capital? is. Okay. So the following statement means two different things in math class and in physics class. In math class, V equals zero. In physics, the electric potential equals five volts. These two Vs do not mean the same thing. When you were using, when I used the letter Y for normal force, I said don't use a capital N because otherwise you end up with an equation like normal force is equal to five newtons. And I said that can be confusing. Unfortunately, the powers that be decided to do it here. You can usually tell the difference from context. Typically, volt is the, the one that's coming after a number. But this is electric potential. And again, we have not talked about voltage yet. That's electric potential. And that is volt. Questions to hear? Let's now explain why abstract light repels in terms of electric potential. If I have a four nanocoulomb charge, right, sitting right there. 